Great to see you here in this new video of lesson six. And this video is about the project management process. We look at the process steps and at the main deliverables of the project management process. First of all, the process steps. We've been talking about this before, but as I told you before, it's very important in project management to understand this properly. First of all, we have the step of initiation, where we are starting with the project. Then we have the planning. The next step is project execution. And then we have project closing. Of course, we also have monitor and control process steps, which are very important in project management. Let's now have a look at the deliverables of this process. The main deliverables for initiation is in fact the charter. It's the one deliverable from this process and basically it describes what the project will be about. Planning, planning contains more steps, more processes, but at the end we create the project management plan. Execution is about deliverables, creating the deliverables and of course, we will also monitor and control the creation of these deliverables. And the last step, sometimes forgotten, but still very important and should always be conducted, is the project closing. Here we're talking about knowledge, gathering the information and lessons learned about the project. But we will see that there are more things in the closing part than just these. Let's have a look at the outputs of those different steps and we start with initiation. Project initiation is the first step of the project management process and here we create the project charter. The charter is the main document that describes the project in simple terms. No technical jargon, no uh, in complicated formulas. It's a description what the project is about, for whom are we doing the project, how will we do it and other parameters like time and money. The charter is the basis of the cooperation between the project team and the sponsor. In the early times of project management, sometimes people still consider the charter as being a kind of voluntary document. It was not necessary. It was not mandatory, but now we consider the charter as a contract between the different parties and the project manager and the sponsor and the main stakeholder will be signing this charter. We also look at planning. Planning is a little bit more complex because once we have a signed charter, we will start by creating the project plan. And the project management plan is about different elements about creating those different components of the project plan. We talk about scope, we talk about um, schedule, about cost, risk, all kinds of things. We will look into that deeper later on. At the end of the planning step, we have what we call the project plan. And the project plan contains all the baselines. And the baselines are important because they are the start, the plan that we want to complete, that we want to implement, and they provide us the necessary information to execute the project. We have the outputs of execution, monitor and control. Here we look at the creation of the deliverables. Now, once the project has been approved, plan, the plan has been accepted, we can continue with execution. It's not always the case that we have the permission to continue. Nevertheless, let's assume that our plan was good. We have good baselines. We have a good revenue. Our business case is valid. And we start by creating those deliverables. We also look at reporting about progress and compliance. That's where we have the uh, monitoring and controlling part. We will share that information with the shareholders and we will use this to evaluate the progress of the project. The team will monitor and control the work 
and of course provide solutions to remediate issues. We may have changes, we may encounter additional risks. There are a lot of things we may encounter here and that we have to resolve. The last thing here is about changes. We have to manage changes according to a predefined process. Changes cannot just be implemented like that. Changes have to be evaluated and presented to the change control board. And once the change control board accepts a change, it will become part of the project. It will be integrated in the project management plan and we will create new baselines. The next thing is about closing. Closing is the last step of the project management process and we will create additional documents and close the project properly. It's a very important step. It's also about creating the as-built plans. It's activating the invoicing if applicable. It's very important if you don't activate that an um, activity has been completed and you don't activate invoicing, you will see that basically nobody will send out an invoice, nobody will receive an invoice and nobody will pay for the invoice. We also look at the transfer of the project uh, result to the operations department or to the customer who will from then on deal with the project, how it has been created. We also conduct lessons learned sessions. We close contracts and disputes, also very important because open contracts and dis uh, disputes can lead to uh, large problems later on for the company create uh, cash problems and it may have to be resolved uh, by different means. It means extra costs, extra resources, basically losses for the company. The last element is preserve the knowledge. We're talking about knowledge. We create knowledge when we are doing projects. So basically what we have to do is to be sure that we keep that knowledge and that we can use it for other projects so that the people don't have to reinvent the wheel. We already have information. We already have solutions to problems that we have resolved before. Let's have a look at how everything fits together. In PMI, we have the 10 knowledge areas and we see them here, integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communication, risk, procurement, and stakeholder. Of course, they are linked to the different process groups. So we have initiation, planning, execution, monitor, and control. Each of those knowledge areas will have processes that will be allocated to some of those process steps. Then we see how the project is working. We see the project life cycle. We start the project, we organize and prepare, we carry out the project and finally we end the project. The diamonds are here typically an indication of milestones. Milestones are important in project management because they link the project to certain realizations, but they also link the project to some business objectives. Both possibilities exist. We also look at the life cycle. Eh? We have the project management life cycle. We have the different process steps that we are considering here. So we first look at the initiation, which is the first step. Then we look at planning, a very important step, of course. We look at execution. We look at monitor and control. And finally, we look at closing, where we are filing everything. When we also look at the other life cycle, which is the project life cycle. So this is related to the different project phases like pre-built phase, right? the pre-built phase where we are looking at all the preparations necessary to start with the building process. Then we have the design. Here we draw the plans of the building, for example, determine construction elements and other. And finally, we are going to build we're actually going to build the infrastructure. Let's have a look how these things look. We have the project life cycle on one side, uh, organizing and preparing, carrying out the work, completing the project, which is specific timeline. But we also have the pre-project work and starting the project. When we look at pre-project work, first we look at needs assessment. What are the needs that we want to cover? 
and we will talk later what's the difference between a need and a solution. It's very important to make a distinction. A need may contain different solutions to resolve a specific need, but a solution is one way to deal with the need and there may be other and better things that we can do. From this, we can create a business case together with the benefits management plan. And once the business case has been approved, we find or we create the project charter and we start with the project management plan. That's the organizing and preparing part of the project. Here we have now the different elements, the generic phases that we can consider. These generic phases are in fact the main elements of the project. And we see the starting the project charter is a little bit outside of the project life cycle, but the project life cycle really starts once we start with the plan, when we carry out the plan and we complete the project. And these are what we call the phase gates. The phase gates are in fact the important steps, the pass over from one phase to another. And these are very important because at phase gates, we can make different decisions. So basically this was it, a little bit more deeper overview of the project management process with more links to how we will organize the project. So let's stop with this video now and let's have a look at the next video. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and bye bye.